This is the Daily Growth Discipleship Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm back again with Josh talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that is how exactly did he overcome the struggles that he had been going through in his story for the last five or six years? The last time we talked about his story, if you remember, he had talked about he was dealing with perfectionism and looking at the Christian life mostly as an external action, something that he had to do rather than someone he had to be. And so I really wanted to find out what are the practical tools and spiritual disciplines that he had incorporated in his life to overcome many of those struggles. And this was really fascinating to me because even though I had been walking with him in the journey through the last five or six years, so I got to live this experience with him, I don't think I'd ever actually asked him this question point blank. So it was really good to sort of hear the summary and, and the, the big picture lesson learned that he's taken away from this. So I know you're really going to get a lot from it, and I just jump right in with this question. So hope you enjoy. As you've walked through this journey over the last five, six years now, what are some of the practices you have incorporated into your life, spiritual disciplines, recreational, whatever it might be, that have really helped reinforce this identity in you? and grow? The first one would be uh, silence. When you try to be perfect on your own and you try to put up this front that makes it appear like you've got it all together, you have to use a lot of words. You have to put a lot of action and effort into being perfect. Silence is one of those spiritual disciplines that just kind of takes that all away from you. If you can't talk, you can't do, you can't perform, all you're left with is just being, which is really all God calls us to do in the first place. You know, to interrupt real quick, I just love that. I think it's one of the reasons why we make Scripture so complicated is just because of the natural limitations of language, because I love what you just said. It's what He calls us to do is to be. <laughs> anyway, I just love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So for me, stopping all of the the performance all of the doing, all of the fronts that I put up, and just sitting in silence, typically by myself, was really uh, one of those practices that helped me gain perspective on who I was. Because really what I was finding was that even my attempts to do things like read the Bible and pray and fast and journal and all these things, in and of themselves, I was attempting to turn them into my own way to be perfect. If I read the Bible for an hour a day, if I prayed for an hour a day, if I journaled for 30 minutes, and if I fasted once a week, I was doing the right things. And so I was turning those spiritual disciplines into the way to be perfect on my own, which is not really practicing the spiritual disciplines in the way that they should be practiced. And for me, silence had a way of kind of doing away with all that stuff. Because if I'm left just sitting in silence where I can't do any of those things, well, what do I have left? The answer is nothing. That's the point. It's to have absolutely nothing left but just to be with your God and your Creator and rest in His grace and that be enough. And so silence was, was really one of the things that helped me through that the most. And then the second was would be journaling, which I know I just said that I sometimes had to stop journaling, but... Really, for me, like as an introvert, I understand my own thoughts and my own experiences better when I write about them. Like somehow the the thoughts become more concrete when I write about them. And typically, I've been journaling on uh, my computer. I use a, an app called Day One Journal. Journaling in those times really helped me understand what I was going through, what I was thinking. It allowed me to reflect and look at what God had been doing in my life over a period of weeks, months, and eventually to be years, and get those glimpses of what he was doing in my life in a micro scale. Looking back on it, you could see it in kind of a, a macro scale. Getting my thoughts out on the page so that I could reflect on them, chew over them, and work through what God was doing in my life in that way was also really, really helpful. But I had to get the silence bit in first, because once I started practicing the spiritual disciplines, 
in a way that put being more like Jesus as the goal rather than doing the spiritual disciplines as the goal. Then I was able to journal and use that spiritual discipline more effectively. Was there some sort of cue or trigger in which you, after maybe practicing silence for a period of time, you felt like, okay, I could start journaling again? So you know how when you're in a relationship with somebody else and you're looking for all those nonverbal cues, trying to understand what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and trying to figure out what you should do based on how they're thinking or feeling, understanding those nonverbal cues takes a while. It takes a long time in the relationship to kind of understand and get a feel for how they're going to respond in any situation. And so that's kind of how... The process was for me and getting back into journaling. I would try it every now and then, and sometimes I would do it and then realize afterward, yeah, I was just doing that to check off the check off the the list. And other times I would do it and think, I did that right. Like I did it because I wanted to understand what God was doing in my life more, and not because I just wanted to do the right thing and. I wanted to become more like Jesus. And so it was it was kind of like working through that relationship over a long period of time. It was never just one thing. I was like, all right, now I'm ready to journal. It was just kind of feeling it out as I went, trying to follow the, the leading of the Spirit, stay open to what He was trying to tell me about my life and about what I was doing. And really, I think that's the key to, to any spiritual discipline is listening to what God's telling you and doing in your life through all those things. Because it's so easy to get wrapped up in just doing the thing just for the sake of doing the thing, and you forget that you're doing it so that you can become more like Jesus. Yeah, it's a means to an end, not the ends in and of itself. Yep. And you're right, it is such a uh, an easy thing to fall into. Um, last question on this topic. About how long of a period of time then were you sort of wrestling around with these, uh, let's say, spiritual discipline relationship issues? <laughs> Oh, I still am. <laughs> yeah, God continues to to do that work in my life. And I'm not going to say that I'll never be done with it. I think there could be a time where, where I do get to the point where spiritual disciplines are just easy, and I'm always doing them for the sake of becoming more like Jesus. But if I've learned anything over the last five years, it's that I don't know enough about myself to make absolute statements. And so. For me, it's it's just a continual thing, always trying to figure out what God's doing in my life and how I can best use the spiritual disciplines to become more like Him. And sometimes I do it well, and sometimes I don't do it well. But the key is coming back to Jesus after the times where I don't do it well and saying, how can you help me do it better? Mm -hmm. And then try it again next time. The struggles that I had with perfection early on uh, really made me feel defeated if I were to fail at something. Whereas, kind of now, if I like if I don't do so well journaling or reading my Bible or praying, it's not the end of the world because my perfection doesn't ride on it anymore. My salvation doesn't ride on it anymore. It's even the even those failed attempts at trying to practice the spiritual disciplines then become an opportunity for me to learn about why I'm failing to practice them correctly. And so like if I if I realize oh, I haven't read my Bible in like 3 days, well, what is it about the last 3 day, 3 days that has kind of kept me from doing that or why haven't I wanted to do that in the last 3 days? And then God and I can kind of walk through that area together and understand what's going on and it's just a whole process of growth one day after the other. Mhm. Mm no, I love that. Um, something our uh, pastoral coach said to me the other day was, you know, it's not the experience that counts, it's how you process it. And that's really what you're talking about here is uh, even failure or perceived failure can represent an incredible opportunity for growth if you look at it not as a failure, but constantly asking, how can the Lord use this in my life to make me more like him? How can I walk through this with him? Yep. And it's easy to look at that kind of stuff when uh, something simple like forgetting to read your Bible is on the line. God's been also teaching me, though, to look at even my own sins in that way. Because really, 
God's grace is there to cover all of our sins, right? Past, present, and future. And if my sin is taken care of, then when I do sin, as long as I maintain that attitude of repentance that says, I'm a sinner, God help me, have mercy on me, and I look at my sins not as a defeat or one more sign that I'm still not like Jesus, but as an opportunity to become more like Jesus as I examine why I sinned in the first place, why I wanted to go in that direction instead of following the leading of the Spirit, then it becomes another opportunity for me to say that's another area that I can become more like Christ in. Josh, thank you so much for your vulnerability and willingness to go on this journey, even amidst the struggle. Your lessons are well taken in that we can always find an opportunity to become more like Christ even in the midst of sin and setbacks. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Daily Growth Discipleship Podcast. Be sure to subscribe for free over at dailygrowthdiscipleship.com or you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Then come back and check out the next chapter in our conversation where Chris talks about journaling, prayer, and Bible study as a valuable tool for finding your identity in Christ. We'll be right back.